Hi, welcome to the Shelly Studio. I'm gonna try something different. A little more jelly printing. Um, but I'm doing, trying to do one pull finished pieces sort of thing. Um, I took a china marker and drew sort of a clock. <laughs> Just simple, and then did the image transfer where I did a thin layer of black and yeah, it worked pretty well. As long as I got the china marker really dark, um, it left a faint clock on there. Um, I've been trying to do one a week, and this one is the first week in January. So it's kind of a New Year's theme, you know, champagne bubbles, that's what those circles are supposed to represent. <laughs> and the clock is supposed to represent a new year. And it's supposed to be just a little bit after midnight. <laughs> and the idea is to put everything down in layers and then pull it all at once. And if you've seen my shorts, I have I have posted the pull of this one. I was too excited to wait till I got my footage edited. Um, I started doing shorts of the pulls with my phone and yeah that's been kind of fun um, and doing it where you can hear the paint releasing from the gel plate and stuff so it's kind of ASMR I guess <laughs> but that's in my shorts if you're interested in watching that um, just trying to make it interesting around the edges I didn't want it to be a hundred percent yellow right um, and that piece of cardboard came out of, um, I think it was a washer or dryer or something. I saw it and I'm like, oh, I want that. <laughs> My sister didn't even question it. I'm like, um, can I have that piece of cardboard? She's like, sure. She didn't even ask why. <laughs> so here it is. Um, this is the one pull. I recorded with both my phone and uh, my regular camera at the same time so that I uh, get both views. But there it is. Isn't that cool? Um, I tried to use colored pencil just to create a little shading around the clock just to help it stand out a little bit more. I'm using indigo blue. So I didn't want to use black necessarily. And I'm just going around it ever so slightly. Hoping that it will help it um, stand out, be a little bit more noticeable. It is the focal point after all. <laughs> but I love the the marks that that cardboard makes. And when the, you put the op other color underneath, so the blue and the yellow together, and that looks really cool. Oh, and then I decided to pull out a, a pale yellow, and I went around the edge of the inside of the clock um, to also help it stand out a little bit. These paints are a little bit gloss. They're not real matte, so it wasn't taken too much. Um, it wasn't... I mean, I guess if I'd have gone over it with... Well, I don't want to because I have metallic on there, so I didn't want it to go... Um, you know, those little gold circles. I didn't want it to go completely matte because that would illuminate the shine on those, right? The metallic look. So, yeah, I tried. I don't know. Do, do you think it made a difference? Maybe a little bit. And I did speed this way up so that <laughs> it didn't take quite as long. And then the edges around the hands of the clock were a little fuzzy so I went around them too. Ok, 
Can't remember what that color was. Maybe, well, just like a dark brown. Some of the dots didn't quite show up, but there it is. You can see the sparkle. <laughs> So I have two, so I had week one and week two of January on here. And the next one was supposed to, sorry about that noise. Um, I was just moving the one picture so I could see the next one. Was supposed to represent snow and winter and coldness. And I'm just using a wooden snowflake as sort of a stamp to try and lift some of the paint off. And that's just, um, I don't even know what that's called. It's just like plastic screening, I don't know, tool. I want to say tool, but it's the stuff sometimes they put under puffy skirts for costumes. So this is silver that I'm just stamping down hoping that it will show through the paint when I pull this up in one layer. This one was not successful um, one pull um, finished piece. And if you saw the short on this one, you know that it um, was pretty boring. <laughs> but I'll do stuff after so we can fix it up a little bit. So... You know, it's it's not not all is lost if you pull it and it's um, boring. See, you can't even see anything on there. Um, I was pointing out that I had a bright yellow spot on there, <laughs> probably from the week before's project. So I decided um, I would add some black, but first I'm lifting it out of those sections. And hopefully just to get what remains underneath the stencil. So I do that and then I'll lift the stencil off. And then I'll lay my blue down. So I felt like it needed something more interesting. So there we have that. And I've lost my snowflakes almost entirely. So we're going to go back with the silver. And stamping in the same general locations I'm going to put my snowflakes back in so like I said it didn't end up being a one pull print but it was still fun and in the end except for that yellow that's on there <laughs> doesn't look too bad So I decide to do even more to it. So I crumple up some paper just to have some ridges and I'm just going to tap it into the white paint and then back onto the picture and to kind of look like frost or, or snow just to be different. And then I decided that wasn't quite giving me enough of the white lines so I went in with a plastic card and made some more lines. Then I decided <laughs> I know I keep I keep doing things. Well I've been watching PM Artist Studio a lot lately and Patricia has been using colored pencils and I have a ton uh, Prismacolor colored pencils so I'm like I should use them so I went through and I went around the snowflake with Prismacolor colored pencil and that might be what's in my hand I didn't know if I edited that out but it wasn't it didn't quite do it for me so I actually end up going over it with a black Stabilo and then activating that with some matte medium so that it would get really dark and I just do it on one snowflake, just to have one kind of stand out from the crowd. And I didn't want to do the one right in the center, 
So I picked one that was kind of off to the side. I can't say that this is like fabulous composition, but it was fun. <laughs> See, I, I I didn't feel like it was did anything. So here's the Stabilo that I'm going around. Even just drawing with the Stabilo made it darker. But I didn't want it to reactivate on accident or anything. So I do take out some matte medium. And actually I think it's like a really old tub of gel gloss medium. Um that I had to add water to even get it to <laughs> move. <laughs> yeah, see, thick old gel medium. Adding a little bit of water. And see how dark that makes it go. Then it really stands out. Yeah, just going around, making sure I touch every spot, because, um, I mean, I guess it's a finished piece, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to just suddenly decide to do something with it and have it activate on me. So, I, I like activating the Stabilo with, um, usually I use a fluid matte medium, but this works. And then I spread it around a little bit because it is kind of a a gloss, um, a glossier than what I've got on the paper. So I just go around everywhere and add it. Just so that it looks consistent, cohesive. <laughs> but there it is. It's my two projects. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and thank you all for watching. Have an awesome day!